Hello, my name is John Ennis. I'm the curator of this exhibition, Our Linen Stories, and the producer of Journeys in Design. With Journeys in Design, we take a different material with each iteration and explore the heritage and more importantly, the contemporary design of that material. Our Linen Stories has been two years in the making and we're pausing at this point at, in Edinburgh at the wonderful Dovecote Tapestry Studio to explore an exhibition which has brought together lots of stories throughout the country and we'll talk a little bit more about the tour. The Linen Stories book is divided into 12 volumes and we're going to start walk through with you this morning um, these different volumes of stories. I hope you enjoy them. So here we are with volume one of our stories. This is called Creating Industry, the creative energies that bring the linen industry to life in Scotland. The first story that we tell is of the Huguenots, the French migrants of the 18th century, chased out of their home country, who brought wonderful weaving skills to Scotland and to Ireland and other places on the continent, including those that we link with in Europe more later. We're leading this particular chapter of stories, uh, book of stories, with two wonderful uh, contemporary designs. This is a quilt by Sinead Black of Bricolage, who graduated from Glasgow University and works in Northern Ireland. Something about a quilt reminds me of homecoming and the place that we live in. The other wonderful contemporary design here is the Milano rug by Gerd He Eady of Morn Textiles, a Norwegian emigre who brought her skills with a linen warp in this rug example to Northern Ireland. And we link with our linen neighbors throughout our stories, particularly to Ireland, Holland, Belgium, and France. I'd like to draw your attention to this map it's particularly interesting to be here in Edinburgh. And this map of Edinburgh, dated 1724, includes reference to Picardy. Picardy was a village in Edinburgh and a region in France. It's named after those Huguenot émigrés who came to Scotland. And it's remembered today in a street name called Picardy Place. So that's what we're trying to do with our linen stories and indeed journeys in design, link contemporary design interventions with our heritage and bring that to life through our individual stories. There are many components to this particular chapter and I won't go into detail of each of them because we illustrate these on our website, www.ourlinenstories.com. I'll mention stories of migration, stories of trade, Stories of banking, many people in Scotland still remember the British Linen Bank, which grew up from the early linen trade here in Edinburgh. Trading people, not such a good story, but an important one to tell. 90% of the linen, rough linen produced in the Highlands went to clothe slaves in the plantations. We don't ignore those stories. Trains and boats and planes is another chapter. Sails, rope, rigging, packing and sacking, all made of linen, and we tell those stories in our journey as well. And finally, the important link between mapping and linen. As you remember, maps were backed in linen to preserve their uh, utility. When they were out and about, the paper might crack, but the linen would keep the map together. And what we've been doing is mapping linen through Scotland and our links, our trading links, former and present with our linen neighbors. This chapter we've called Sharing Material Culture. Seed, fibre, thread and factory, a century journey through Europe. Regardless of creed or language, some of the elements of our stories are shared across the continent. A linen is the quintessentially European textile. We lead with these two wonderful designs. Uh, playing cards, damask linen cloth from a wonderful couple of designers who originally worked with Tilburg Museum, a textile museum in the Netherlands. And this design by Lorna Brown, Scottish artist designer, called Flax Fields, produced uniquely for our exhibition. We also talk about the importance of the smell of industry and of rotting flax with a bottle of rotting flax. We've commissioned some weaving songs 
that was part of the working life of people in the weaving industry. We've called that chapter Weaving Rhythm. Looming Large tells the story of the move from what was essentially a cottage industry into factories. Swathes of men lost their jobs. Women were paid a fifth of the wage when we industrialized. Tools of the trade. And we've got Linen Millie, our, our doll, with a belt full of tools, looking at the actual objects that were used in making and processing linen, uh, from weaving with the bobbins to uh, the tools of the trade uh, in the linen industry. And finally, we look at a particularly wonderful um, example of woven cloth. We've called that chapter A Master at Work. This is a reproduction of the artist's canvas used by El Greco. And although much oil painting is done on plain weave canvas, some was done on pattern weave. And here we show the result of some hand weaving research into those important artist canvases. Volume three, Nurturing Design Talent. I realized as we were touring around that there were lots of elements, the ecology of design as we took our journey. And this panel of stories celebrates some of the ways that we can actually support designers from a young age right up on through their careers to generate interest and income for local communities. We've led this particular series of stories with two wonderful contemporary designs. This curtain by Duncan Neal for Earth of Upperlands and this wonderful bag, a collaborative project constructed by Emily Millichip here in Edinburgh. The rest of these stories include stories of early patronage where local weavers were supported by the grand houses and palaces through Scotland and the role of prizes in nurturing design. And we've looked at a little bit about award-winning British design. Soft Cell is our chapter all about retail and we've homed in on some wonderful contemporary logos for sale and the graphic design of selling linen. Thinking Museums. That's about how museums can be more than a repository of wonderful objects. They can reach out into communities. And we have a wonderful example of that from the Lisburn Linen Centre, Lisburn Museum in Northern Ireland, reaching out with educational outreach using a puppet based on the, on the flax plant. The Right Type is a chapter celebrating the importance of photography and journalism, including some local Scottish magazines and journals, including our listings magazine called The Skinny, which has a wonderful design section in it. And finally, we home in on the story of Damask, linen very famous for that type of weave. And we tell those stories with three wonderful examples. This chapter we've called Sustaining Futures. It's an important look at the role of flax fibre in linen in what happens next so that we walk more lightly on the earth and sustain and protect our resources moving forward. And that's a key theme for Journeys in Design. We feature two important objects in this, a wonderful chair by Dutch designer Christine Mendersma, made from recycled PLA plastic fibers and what would normally be thrown away short flax fibers, engineered by NKF in Holland into a fleece and then heat molded into a chair. We've also got a lamp made by French designer Nicolas Malacan and of an important contribution to sustainable building with a flax insulation panel. And one of the favorite objects in the exhibition, a set of skis by Jamie Conker, who works in his workshop in Burnham in Scotland. And two layers of that, these skis, are of flax fiber biocomposite. The future use of this important and venerable material. Journeys in Design is interested in the link between art, design and industry and those interesting spaces in between. As part of this particular exhibition, we commissioned a wonderful textile artist, Akshata Makashi. With materials all derived from flax and with origins across the linen nations that we've linked with, Scotland, Ireland, Holland, Belgium and France, Akshata has produced a beautiful new picture, tapestry weave, called A New Union Europe. 
linking design and industry, this incredible new twill called a New Linen Scotland. This is designed by Claudia Escobar, who draws on her Chilean and Polish roots and has settled in Leith and worked with Peter Greggs in Kirkcaldy, our sole surviving linen manufacturer here in Scotland, to produce a brand new linen. Claudia, very interested in sustainability, didn't use harsh chemicals to weather her new linen. She put the linen in a lobster pot and sunk it in New Haven Harbour to get the effect of that on the linen. This chapter we've called The Drapery, a little riff on both hanging out your linens and buying linen in drapery stores. Our linen stories were seen by more than two and a half thousand people as we toured the borders, Fife, the Lothians and the Highlands of Scotland, and it reached many more people through our social media channels, Facebook and Instagram, and of course our website. Very generously, people have engaged directly by sending us pieces of linen from throughout Europe. We have some Finnish linen, Polish linen, Belgian linen and French linen, as well as, as many pieces from throughout Scotland. We've included some classic tea towel designs as a motif for how linen has engaged with our nation. We have our, our poet, Robert Burns, featured in that one. The opening of the Forth Road Bridge on another one. And this one, all about Kirkcaldy, uh, a very important linen town in Scotland. So this story is one close to my heart. I grew up in a town called Lisburn, though I've been in Scotland for 30 years. Lisburn's a linen town, and the word Millie was used when I was a kid, quite pejoratively, to describe the women who worked in the linen industry there. I've grown to learn how hardworking, multitasking, and very skilled these women were, the backbone of industries in Scotland, Ireland, and, and in Europe. So working with illustrator and designer Sue Shields, we devised a tea towel telling that story in celebration of Linen Millie. You can dry your dishes or you can cut it out and make a doll. And I'm very honoured that 10 women in Scotland and 10 women in Northern Ireland helped us produce 20 Linen Millie dolls who are here joined together in a troupe we've called Ur Millie to celebrate those hardworking women. Coupled with our Linen Millie dolls, we're presenting for the first time an important salvaged set of photographs from an old linen works in Kirkcaldy, and I'm very grateful to Robert for bringing these to the exhibition. They show the 11 departments of that particular linen factory, including some amazing photographs of women at work. Flax Futures. This is a chapter all about our legacy projects, those projects that are stretching out with generous collaboration from our linen stories. There are nine illustrated here, and I'll talk about three of them. Airing our dirty linen, 300 years of laundry culture, linking with Govan Hill Baths, an old steamy, which is the name given in Scotland to public laundries, and Tilburg in the Netherlands. Silverburn, a parkland in Fife, given to the nation by the Russell family and having a wonderful old 1850s brick flax mill in it, which by 2025 is going to open as a center of flax fiber and linen culture. And this tapestry panel representing our workshops called Wild Weaving Workshops, an opportunity to come together and weave a simple tapestry panel and enjoy and benefit from meditative powers and calming powers of weaving together. So this is a very special set of postcards. Throughout the months of our linen stories, touring in Scotland and across to do research in the continent and over to Ireland, we've been doing regular Facebook posts. To make that real, to take the virtual into real time, we've converted some of these stories into postcards, illustrated on the front with the region and the story allied to that picture on the back. It's a way that we've allowed people coming to the exhibition to focus on the tour that we've been enjoying over this past few months. So thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this brief video tour of our Linden Stories exhibition and that you will continue to enjoy it via the website and our 
Facebook posts and our Instagram posts. We're continuing the tour. This year we're going to Northern Ireland, to Belfast, Oma and Derry, and I hope in 2021 onwards to the Netherlands and beyond. This has been the first material adventure for Journeys in Design. And this year we're looking at materials maritime with rope, plastic and seaweed and a brand new three year series called Concrete Designs to Thrive. Full details on our website and in our newsletters. Thank you for listening.